By the end of this video, you're going to be convinced that you should use Ethelfled in your lineup, and you don't have to take my word for it. Top-tier Ark of Osiris League teams are winning by using Ethelfled and Trajan, and they're not even bringing mixed troops. They're using full cavalry. So stick around in this video for the information you really need to know about Ethelflaed, and you're probably going to start using her after you finish this video. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. But I was actually inspired by Dudu, who said, Chiskool, I would love to see a video that talks more about why it is that Ethelfled is better than people think. And I'm paraphrasing. That's not exactly how we said it. But I thought, hey, man, that actually is a really good idea. Thank you for helping me out with the video idea. So here's the video that explains to you why Ethelfled is so strong. You're probably going to figure out how to start using her again in your lineup by the end of this video. The secret to Ethelfled, I'm going to front load. The secret is that her AoE damage is not reduced by the number of targets that she's hitting. This is the secret to Ethelflaed. There are a small number of commanders that have this superpower. Sun Tzu is one of those commanders at the epic tier that has this superpower. His AoE damage is not reduced based off of the number of targets that he's hitting. Even Bybars has this superpower. His AoE damage is not reduced based off of the number of targets he's hitting. Five targets, 1,000 damage factor a pop. But if you look at almost any other legendary in game, and almost, I mean, a bunch of epics, almost every epic in game, they will reduce the damage they deal based on the number of targets that you're hitting. For example, Guan Yu, extremely powerful. Damage dealt to each target is reduced by 15% for each additional target. This means that if you hit two targets with Guan Yu. Yes, you do more total damage because now you're doing more damage, okay? In total, you're hitting two things. But the damage you deal to each target is reduced by 15% because there were two targets. If you hit all three targets, which he can hit with his AoE, your damage is reduced by 30%. You still do more total damage because you're now hitting three things. But the damage you deal to any one thing is actually less if you wanted to do more single target damage, you do more single target damage by hitting one thing with Guan Yu because your damage is reduced by virtue of hitting more things. So your damage to any one target is lower, but your total damage goes up when you hit more stuff. Pretty simple to understand, but let's go a little further. Let's get a look at YSG, one of the best commanders in the game. Easy to understand why he's so good. He does a big circle AoE when you have his expertise. He's the first commander every single player should aspire to get the expertise unlocked for. But he also has a 15% damage reduction for each additional target. Now, this is a 15% reduction per target beyond the first. At least that's how I understand this. So that means if you're hitting two targets you're gonna do 15% less damage per target. With three targets, it's 30% less damage per target. With four targets, it's 45% less damage per target. And with five targets, you're talking about 60% less damage per target. And in fact, by this point, you're even doing less total damage than if you hit four targets. I want you to hear that out. When Esong hits five targets, he is doing less total damage than when he was hitting four targets. And that is because now the damage re is reduced by 60%. But Ethelflaed, aha, the reason that she is still being used by Osiris League winning teams is that her AoE damage is is not reduced. Now, in order to really understand just how insane this is, I need to put this into a table. We need to do some math, and I want you to see the numbers, and don't worry, I'll put colors to it to make it really easy to see that, oh my gosh, 
Ethel Flood is actually very powerful. Here's a spreadsheet where I did the basic math for you, and it's not doing like the final damage number that you would ultimately deal to the target. It's just looking at the damage factor that each of these commanders would do and the number of targets that you're hitting and whether or not they have reductions. So Ethel Fled, Sun Tzu, and Bai Bars have no reductions per target that they hit beyond the first. So for example, Sun Tzu does 800 damage factor to each target and does 200 damage factor for one turn after that, okay? So it's effectively 1,000 per target. Bai Bars does 1,000 per target. So maybe Bai Bars is the easier example, right? When he goes to two targets, it's now 2,000 total damage factor. Three targets, it's 3,000 damage factor. All up to five targets, 5,000 damage factor. But you notice something funky happening with Esong. And I tried to color it a little bit so you could see their peak damage seems to be when you're hitting four targets. And it barely goes up when you go from three to four targets because, again, that reduction we were talking about, the percent reduction... When you have these commanders that have this 15% reduction for targets beyond the first, you're looking at 15% less damage when you get to two targets, 30% less damage when you get to three, 45% less damage per target when you get down to four targets, and 60% less damage when you're at five targets. This is a big deal, okay? There are some big implications here, by the way, but if we just look at this chart for a moment and appreciate who does the most AoE damage in a big fight where you can hit the maximum number of targets possible? Hello, it's Sun Tzu, it's Bai Bars, Ethel Fled, and also Guan Yu, who, by the way, is capped at three targets, which is why I put this in yellow, to sort of show, like, hey, we can only hit three targets here. So, yeah, the damage isn't going up, it's not going down. He's only hitting three targets, even though, yeah, I just wanted to show, right? If there's four or five targets, Guan can only still hit three. But this has big implications. The reason that all of these Osiris League top-tier players are using Ethel is because not only are you getting 4,000 damage factor, but she's also putting wicked debuffs. We're going to talk more about those debuffs in just a second. The reason you don't see Sun Tzu and Bai Bars is because epics are simply outclassed. Let me show you that really quickly. If you are in KVK Seasons 1 through 3, Sun Tzu and Bai Bars should be your secret weapon for big group fights. There aren't as many of those in KVK Seasons 1 through 3, but keep in mind, the AoE damage that they do is extremely good when you hit lots of targets. But this is the museum, and the museum relics are the reason that epic commanders are dead in Season of Conquest. They are dead on arrival because you can put like 45 percent of stats onto a legendary commander all you have to do is unlock the relic and that's achievable even free to play as you enter your first kvk you're going to get enough materials that you need to go and do this so this was the death of epic commanders in season of conquest making the legendary commanders relevant again killed the relevance of the epic commanders. You can still use some of them, okay? Y you go into Canyon, you'll find some Sun Tzu's, you'll find some Joan of Arcs, okay? But eventually, you move away from those commanders because, oh, I mean, geez, you get a 5-5, five, 1-1 five, one, one Mehmed, and then you unlock the relic over here, and it's like, okay, I got 20% more health, 5% more skill damage. The rest of the kit of the commander starts to overpower the fact that Sun Tzu and Bai Bars do so much AoE. But Ethel Fled is also here because she's legendary. She gives you 15% attack and 10% march speed. But she also does really important debuffs. Let's go back to that damage table. Before I show you how astonishing the Ethel Fled debuffs are, I first want to just highlight that although Ethel is a commander I'm strongly advocating for, just look how low her damage is at the low end. Can we just appreciate that for a moment? So Ethel and Sun Tzu and Bai Bars, these commanders that scale up incredibly well with many targets, look really unimpressive when the number of targets is low. Whereas Guan Yu and Nebu and Esong all do large amounts of damage, even when the number of targets is very small. Now, this is one of the reasons why Ethel is so strong in Ark of Osiris specifically, and you don't see those same players using her in Ark of Osiris necessarily bringing her into KVK because you won't always find 
big brawls in KVK where you are guaranteed that you're going to hit five targets every single time your AoE is fired off. Now, my math here may not exactly be perfect because of how Nebu's skills work. He does 1,500 damage factor up to five targets. And when you have his expertise, he does 500 more damage factor to the first target. I don't know if that 500 damage factor is also reduced because that only applies to the first target or if it is reduced um, when you're hitting multiple targets. I don't know. I assumed it wasn't. So Nebu's damage might be slightly lower than it's represented here. I just want to call that out. But that's not really material. All of this, even if this math is not perfect, it illustrates the point, which is that Ethel does lots of damage in a arc brawl in the middle or in a big KVK fight where, you know, tons of marches are stacked up. But I listed the perk here because the perk is also really important. Sun Tzu, nothing special beyond the damage. I guess I, guess I could list Rage Gen. You do generate a little bit of rage for each target you hit with Sun Tzu. That's, you know, I should have listed that. Buy bars... Okay, nothing special. It's just really some damage. Okay, E Song, it's just damage. Nebu, it's just damage. But you see, Guan does the silence. You see why Guan Yu is so popular? Joan of Arc Prime actually does the same amount of damage factor. Okay, but she's giving rage per second for a couple marches and damage for those marches. But I want to key into this Ethel Fled debuff. How good are Ethel's debuffs? Well, you know, I did a little bit of math here just to illustrate how insane this is. But you're looking at a 30% reduction of attack, defense, and health for two seconds. We're talking about a 90% stat reduction for two seconds, and that's per target you hit. Now, it doesn't scale up exactly, but for each target, they experience that debuff, okay? And, for, and I sort of add that all together. So what is the total effect of hitting five targets with Ethel Fled? is not only does she have that 4,000 damage factor, but also you're looking at 450% stat reduction for two seconds. Just think about that for a second. She's taking 450% of stats, that's 30% health, 30% defense, 30% attack per target off the board. Okay, I mean, that's pretty good. Now, this doesn't stack with other debuff effects, and let me explain. If there is a stronger reduction effect applied to the target, then that aspect of the Ethel Flight debuff won't apply. For example, Nevsky could do an upwards of a 45% defense reduction. Well, if the 45% defense reduction is applied, then Ethel's 30% reduction will not apply, but the attack debuff will, and the health debuff will still work, okay? So um, if you add an equivalent debuff applied, I think that the existing debuff stays. We'd have to do a little bit of testing to see how this works. and I don't want to promise exactly how this goes, but I think the existing debuff will stay, and it won't extend the duration of it. So if you already add a 30% health reduction from, let's say, Gilgamesh, um, and then Ethel would hit the target, I don't think that Ethel's will overwrite, and then you get her two-second duration. I think the existing one just prevails. But it's neither here nor there. The point is that it's such a massive reduction that these teams are using Athol and Trajan, and they're bringing all cavalry. So they don't even care about bringing mixed troops to get the extra attack that comes from the fourth skill of Ethel Flood. That's 20% of attack. They just say, you know what? I don't care. They don't even care about the debuffs that Trajan gives and the extra damage factor he does when you have mixed troops. They just want the march speed. And that's something that's really relevant for Ark of Osiris more than it is for KVK-like situations. But still... Let's talk about the takeaways and what this means for you. If you get into big fights where you can hit lots of targets consistently, I mean at least three targets, probably more, then Ethel Fled should probably be a consideration for your lineup. Or if you just don't have all that many commanders yet, then Ethel Fled should absolutely be a commander that is in your lineup assuming you have the relic for her, and assuming you can find a good pair. And I'll talk about a few good Ethel Fled pairs, but I'll also refer you to some other videos because I have covered this extensively in other places. Now, the rest of Ethel Fled's kit almost doesn't matter because she's here for the damage, but I will remind you that she reduces the counterattack damage that you take. She has a slowing effect. She also has plus 20% attack if you have mixed troops, 
And if you are applying slows to your enemies, then you're going to do 20% more damage with Ethel Flood, which is a big deal when you think about how much damage factor she's cranking out. So ideally, your enemy is slowed. But keep in mind that these Osiris League champion teams run Ethel Flood primary, Trajan secondary. And I want to just talk about that aspect of this a little bit in case you're considering the combo and in case you're thinking of using Ethel Flood primary. I mentioned before they use her primary for the march speed. I think this is in large part because of the Peacekeeping Tree March Speed Talents. That is my best guess. The other thing that I will add about using her primary and Trajan secondary is that in a lot of ways that is disadvantaged. You really want your Trajan to use his active skill first and buff all your other commanders with bonus skill damage. Even Ethel fled. You want her to do more skill damage. Okay, you really do. So the fact that they run the Trajan secondary is just such a strong signaling of how powerful the Ethel Fled is. And look, the debuffs are also really good to apply early on Ethel Fled. You apply those debuffs early and then everybody hits the target and they have 30% less health. They have 30% less defense. You will do more damage to the target. So that is another way of thinking about that. Obviously, the easiest pairing here is going to be Trajan primary Ethel Fled secondary use mixed troops. That is the easiest, most obvious pairing for open field fighting. This is something I do on my restart project. I don't plan to replace that anytime soon. And again, the big downfall here is that you really aren't hitting five targets as much as you think in regular KVK open field fighting. You really just aren't. You are not. And even though she has a large template, I just want to emphasize another time that it's easy to look at that big number that Ethel can do at her top end but to recognize that she is not going to do that all the time, you're probably hitting less than five targets, is very important. And this is why, even on my main account, I will not be swapping in Ethel Fled for most of my open field fighting, because I think I could put a better secondary to Trajan. I'm probably hitting more like two or three targets most of the time. Realistically, you don't find that dense packing that you see in an Ark of Osiris mid-brawl, in your open field KVK fighting. You just don't, especially the longer the KVK runs, you'll find fewer and fewer situations where that's the case. But just to give you a few really fast moving options, places you could put your Ethel Fled if you didn't have some other commander to put her, okay? You would want to stuff her as the secondary commander to someone who already has a solid amount of march speed, although Ethel does bring a little bit of march speed herself. So, for example, it feels like heresy to put Ethel Fled behind Joan of Arc, but would it be the worst? Personally, I'd rather put Ethel Fled behind a commander that's already got a little bit of tankiness baked in, which is why in the early game, you'll see a lot of Richard with Ethel Fled, you'll see a lot of Martell with Ethel Fled, because what you're doing here, as an example, with the Martell Ethel Fled is you're boosting your all damage dealt, and then boom, you hit him with that big AoE damage from Ethel Fled, your goal is to get a lot of damage out on the board, buffed by Charles Martel. But the reason I keep back into a commander like Joan of Arc, which again, like some people will think you're crazy, Chiskel, is that if you use Joan of Arc primary, you also still have the support tree. And often this was done, I think I would say historically, with Saladin primary, Ethel secondary, because you actually run your talents all the way up to get Cage of Thorns. So now, when your Joan of Arc or Saladin does their skill damage, they are going to slow the target, which means that Ethel will do 20% more damage. Okay, so big win. You're going to be doing more damage to that slowed target, and uh, Joan of Arc, you even get to hit him again. Well, you have that boosted damage because the target is slowed. So I, I think that Joan of Arc, I mean, this is a newer combo, right? And I'm not saying this is like a top tier meta. Like, I'm not going to run this, but if you were really newer to Season of Conquest, or you're looking for a way to include Ethel Fled, these are things that you could go and look at. I don't think that, like, for example, Guan Yu with Ethel Fled would be a great choice, because I really do think you want that slow. You want a support tree commander who already has some good damage mitigation, and also the ability to apply a slow. I think that's really the sweet spot, right? I, don't, I think looking at Ethel Fled like a bad Honda is probably not the way to go, Although the metaphor is probably closer than you would think. And I do want to remind you that if you try to run around in the open field in KVK with an Ethel primary, 
if you don't have like an extremely tanky Trajan secondary to back that up, you are going to get focused out incredibly fast. And realistically, any March can get focused out in the open field. But running Ethel primary is actually a bait. It's a trap. If you put that Trajan secondary, you are baiting your enemy to hit that really tanky March in favor of hitting other things that were actually much weaker, like your E-Song March is probably much weaker, for example. So there is some strength to running that kind of trap, but I personally don't plan to run it. I actually don't plan to run Ethel in my lineup for my open field, because I really do think, given the commander depth I have, and given how many targets I'm probably hitting, I'm not really getting the full benefit. I got a lot of other commander choices. But most people should be looking at Ethel as an inclusion, and they probably shouldn't look to swap her out anytime soon. Certainly, as I looked at the math myself, I realized that I probably on my restart will be using Ethel Flood a good bit longer than I had originally sort of thought in my mind. Maybe I'd try to replace her. I suppose one other trap you could try to run is like a Constantine Ethel. I personally don't really like Constantine for the open field. He's a little slow, okay? His buff's fine, but he's just sort of a little, a little slow, a little clunky for what he's doing. Um, but, like, you know, you could run Constantine, Ethel Constantine as a pairing even. You'd even run Ethel primary, Constantine secondary, and take advantage of the, all the mixed troops over here. I don't love it, but it's kind of like a Trajan trap. It's actually kind of surprising we don't see more of that as, like, a budget version of this sort of Trajan equivalent. Just food for thought, right? There will be a lot of people who honestly doubt the guidance that I'm sharing in this video, and I would encourage you not to take my word for it. Tune in to the Ark of Osiris League casting that we've been doing, and you can watch any old video of that. By the way, they're all out there on YouTube. You can look at the Osiris League Grand Prix, where all of the top teams could choose literally any commander in the game, any equipment in the game. They had five copies of it, and they were still running Ethel. I mean, if that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you're looking for more information about Ethelflaed pairings and talents and other considerations, I'll have two videos about Ethelflaed cards here and here in the end screen in just a second.